Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? This is Pastor Cass. Um, I know you're like, man, we keep seeing you a lot. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but we're going to be entering into a season of fasting and consecration starting on Monday. And I know for many of us who are a part of this church or who watch us and who interact with us on a um, consistent basis online, um, the concept of fasting is very, is very new. Or, you know, it's something that we've done for years, but we never really thought about the why or the how that we fast. So I wanted to take a moment and do some teaching about fasting and, you know, the importance behind it. So grab your Bible, grab your Bible, grab your Bible. If, if you're watching this on a computer, open up another tab and hop, hop on Bible Gateway because we're going to dig into the Word of God just for a little bit so that way we get an understanding of what God is asking of us to do for these next few days and also really get direction about what we're going to be doing. So before we do anything else, before we say anything else, let's go ahead and open with a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that you have gathered us together on this day to discuss your word, Lord God, to hear what you have to say to our church. Now, Lord, I pray that you word my mouth as, you, as, as these directives are released, as this, as this wisdom that you've given to me is shared across the four corners of the earth, Lord God. We pray that technology works. We pray that all te that, that internet works. We pray that everything works so that people can get the full measure of this word. And God, we give you glory and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. So a fast is what is called a spiritual discipline. It's something that you do to, make, to, to maintain your spirit, to maintain your walk with God. Now, we've heard a lot about fasting over the past few years as a dietary choice, such as, you know, intermittent fasting, you know, only eat eight hours a day. Um, you know, don't eat for one day, eat for three, things like that. And, you know, people talk about, oh, my mind is so clear, I can think straight, blah, 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 blah. But fasting is primarily a spiritual practice. And we fast with the goal of hearing from God. You fast when you get an, an when you want an answer that you typically would not get in a normal prayer session. So you pray and you seek the face of God and you're surrendering something to hear from God. That's something I want to make clear to you. You are surrendering something to hear from God. So I didn't want us to walk into this blindly or just say, oh, pastor called fast, I'm going fast. I really want us to dig into this and really think about why, why are we fasting? Um, you know, this time of consecration comes at the heels of my sabbatical, my time kind of away from things and being able to rest and recoup and receive and receive what, um, from, from the people of God. And um, towards, the, towards the middle of, of March, God began to speak to me. He said, call a fast. I'm like, okay, call, God, are you calling a fast for me or are you calling a fast for the church? I was like, I'm calling a fast for the church. Because we are about to enter into one of the greatest seasons in the history of this ministry. But we cannot carry old baggage with us and package it as new. I'll say that again. We cannot carry old baggage with us and, pa and package it as the new. So we're going to be primarily coming out of Isaiah 58. And, it's, and we'll be coming from the English Standard Version, the ESV. So, you know, pick your preference of version you want to read. Um, but mine might sound a little bit different than yours. Um, and also, put your finger, put, your, put, a, put a piece of paper, you know, I could put an offering envelope in it, um, on, or open up another tab if you're online to Matthew 6, 16 through 18. Matthew 6, 16 through 18. But we're going to parse through the Old Testament first. So Isaiah 58 is instructions that Isaiah is receiving from God regarding what is true and false fasting. So let's go ahead. We're going to go from top to bottom on this chapter, but we're going to break it up in chunks because I don't want to read this whole thing, try to explain this whole thing, but like y'all understand this whole thing. Also, part of the reason why I'm pre-recording this and not doing this live is that I want you to be able to go back to this and rewind and use this as a launching pad for your own personal prayer and personal study. So let's read what the word of the Lord says to us. Starting at the first verse, cry aloud and do not hold back. 
Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgressions, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the judgment of their God. They ask, me, uh, ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why have we fasted and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all of your workers. Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice to be heard on high. Is such the fast I chose, a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow down his head like a reed and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? So this section is what fasting is not. I really want to read verse 3, the first part of verse 3 again, because it, I need this to register in your spirit. Why have we fasted and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Why have we fasted and you see it not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Then God begins to outline the reasoning. And the reasoning is, is this, that you have, you put the air of fasting, but your actions show the, me the true measure of your heart. That people will, will be like, oh, I'm on a fast, but they still cussing out their kids. That, oh, I'm on a fast, and they still yelling and screaming and doing all this other stuff, and they've not prepared their heart for what God requires of them during this time. Again, remember, fasting is designed to surrender yourself to hear, to, to hear from God, to get what God has for you. So, when we fast, we're supposed to walk in a humility, walk in the grace, kind of really model, really work to model what God has given us, what God has graced us with. But if you're fasting for personal gain, I ain't a fast, that's a diet. If you're fasting because it looks good, and I'm going to flat out tell you this right now. If you're fasting because I'm calling, I'm, the Lord told, told her pastor to call a fast, so I'm a fast, but you have not set your mind on this, go eat a hamburger. Go, go get you a Big Mac and get it right. Yes, I am calling a fast for the church, but you have to settle it in your heart. Because, yes, we're fasting for the things for this ministry, but this fast is more so for you than it is for this building. It's more so for you than it is for this ministry. Because God is preparing you, my friend, for greater things. God's preparing you for the next level, for the next dimension of your walk with God. So you have to settle in your heart. Your first question is, am I doing this for the right reasons? Am I doing this for godly reasons? So we can't be performative. We can't just we can't just do this and put on the air because you're gonna get found out. I just I'm just gonna tell you right now. This it's gonna happen. So why are you fasting? What is in your heart? So let's keep reading. We're going to go, we're going to keep going. We're on verse 6 now. We're going to look at verses 6 through 7, okay? Y'all stick with me. Is not this the fast that I chose, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? It is not to sh is, is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked co to cover him and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. 
So the first purpose of fasting is realignment, recommitment to, the, to your yes to God. I'm going to say that again. The first purpose of fasting is realignment and recommitment to your yes to God. We fast to, to affirm our yes of salvation and surrender and our yes to, co to commission. So we fast for a yes to salvation and surrender and a yes to commission. What do I mean by that? So we fast for our freedom. We fast for our healing. We fast for our deliverance. We fast for our breakthrough. That the chains and the bonds that have held us back prior to this moment be broken so that way we are able to fulfill the commission that God has called for us to do. We fast to be humble. The Bible says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. As you're pushing away the plate, as you're putting that cigarette down, as you're not spending so much time on social media, you're saying, God, I surrender this. I lay this down so I can hear from you, and you can deal with me so I can fulfill what you've called me to do. Is this not the fast I've chose to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, the yoke of bondage, the heavy yoke, your connect, the yoke that, that restricts your movement, those things in the spirit realm that have been blocking you from getting to where you need to go? That you see, you see the progress in front of you, praise God. But, you're, but you keep getting, getting pulled back like you're on a bungee cord. That's what God is breaking. He's breaking your habits. He's breaking your thinking. He's breaking the cycles so that you may be able to walk in the fullness of who you are. And from that fullness, from that yes to surrender and that yes to, to your salvation comes the yes to the commission. Sharing your bread with the hungry. Bringing the homeless poor into your house. Covering the naked. And, and conquering your flesh. That's key. To fulfill your commission, you have to conquer your flesh. Jesus said, if you, if you want to follow me, deny yourself, leave everything behind, and take up your cross. When we fast, that's what we do. And this was reiterated by Jesus, but also by, by many of the minor prophets, you know, to seek justice, to love mercy, to walk humbly with your God. You know, I'm tired of your rituals. I'm looking for your heart. These things have been said. So when we fast with a, with a, with a heart that is aligned with God and saying, God, I'm fasting so I can hear from you, you're being, you're being restored to become what he needs you to be. So we're going to look at verses 8 through 11 next. So let's keep reading. Then, you shall, then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and, you will, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your mist, the pointing of the finger, and speaking wickedness, mm, mm, mm. If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. So the second purpose of fasting is to realign with your relationship with God. This realignment empowers us to live a life of holiness empowered by the Holy Spirit. So the first pur purpose is realignment and recommitment to your yes. And then, and then the, the second purpose is realigning with your, with your relationship with God. Why, why, am I, why am I speaking of this purpose here? Because this is the result 
of saying yes to surrender and salvation and yes to commission. Because the glory and the presence and the power and the favor of God shall go before you, behind you, and beside you. And he will hear your prayer. Because we went through the process to say yes to your surrender and to your salvation, there must be repentance. Let me say that again. There must be repentance. In the Bible, when they called upon days of, of, of fasting and praying and sackcloth and ashes, that the whole kingdom had to repent for the sin first so that the favor could come next. then you'll know that you, you are in alignment because he will hear your prayer. He will receive the incense. So as we're fasting, we're praying because our, our theme this year is the year of habitation. As we're fasting, we are crying out to God. We say, Lord, we repent for our, we repent for our, for our individual sin. We repent for our corporate sin. We lay things at your feet, Lord God, so you may receive this praise, that you may receive the worship, that you may fulfill what you have spoken over us because we have prepared ourselves for the next move for the next phase. Because we are willing to be salt and light. We are the salt of the earth. Remember salt, I talked about this years ago, that salt is not just a flavor agent, it's also a preservative. And also during these times, it was also currency. So it, was, it had high value. Light pierces through darkness. In light, there is safety. So we are able to be who we as believers are called to be. We are called to show the world that there is value, that there's something different, that we add a little flavor to this world, but also that when you are walking with, that, as examples of Christ, we are, that you walk with us, you're walking in an arc of safety. And when you are in Christ, there is safety. Let's go through verses 11 and 12. And this is crucial. I want y'all to hear these verses. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairers of the breach, the restorers of streets to dwell in. The third purpose of fasting is personal and or corporate revival or realignment. Revival indicates that something was dead or unconscious. And when we are revived, we are empowered to restore and reconcile pretty much to bring people to the knowledge of Christ. We said yes to our surrender and our salvation. We said yes to our commission. We have prepared ourselves and we have laid ourselves at the altar. We have fully realigned ourselves with God. Because you can say yes to your surrender and yes to your salvation. You can say yes to your commission. But you can still walk in, a, walk, walk in out of alignment with God. So that's why it's crucial for us to say, okay, we say yes to these things and we align with you. And when those things happen, it makes room for revival. Revival indicates that something was dead. And it's interesting. I'm just going to go here. Can I go here, y'all? Y'all know I'm going to go here. It's interesting to me that everybody is crying out revival, revival, revival in these days, but they're not acknowledging the fact that, that there's something, that, that something has to die first. That we are experiencing a time in Christianity to where, especially in, in the churches of America and in America proper, that we are that we are, are far from where we were spiritually. And this everybody's blaming it on the world, but baby, it starts in the church. So when I'm aligned 
with him. He guides me and he leads me so I can fulfill my purpose. He revives me. He empowers me to fulfill my purpose, which is to bring things back together, to bring people into, into the kingdom. And, and like the book Jude says, to snatch them out of the fire. And let's be honest, the American church right now has not been repairers of the breach. We've been builders of it. So we fast seeking a, a fresh anointing, a, a fresh indwelling, a renewing of the spirit, a renewing of our minds, so that way we are able to bring things together, to bring forth the reconciliation that we sought out for ourselves. And let's read these last two verses here. If you turn back your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath of delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it not going your own ways or seeking your own pleasures or talking idly, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So here's the key to this. You need to come into this process with intentionality. It goes back to what I talked about in the beginning. Don't just say, hey, I'm fasting because the pastor said to fast or the church is fasting. I need you to come into this within my, in your mind saying, God, this is what I need you to take out and this is what I need you to put in. God, I, I'm, I need an answer. I need an answer to this. God, we need this thing to move out the way so we can move forward. God, I need to be delivered of this. I need to be healed of this. I need to be changed of this and I will do whatever it takes. I will do this with intention. Fasting is an intentional act. You are making an intentional choice and you're saying I'm going to stick with this choice for these next some odd days so I can hear from God. Again, this is why I'm taking a moment out of, out of my paternity leave, my sabbatical to talk to you because I want to make sure that you understand the seriousness of what we're about to go into as a body, that God is calling for us to make an intentional act, to put a demand on his presence, to put a demand on his power, saying, I'm surrendering this so I can hear from you, and I'm not moving till I hear something. And even after I hear something, I'm going to sit to hear the rest of the story. And God honors us when we honor him with the right heart and the right spirit. So this is why we fast. We fast to reaffirm our yes of surrender, salvation, and our yes to commission. We fast to realign ourselves with him, and we fast to have personal and corporate revival, revival, so that way we may be able to, to fulfill the mandates that he's called for us to do. And we fast with intention and with strategy so we may see what God has for us. So Jesus gave us instructions on how to fast. So I know you've been like, when are we going to get to this Matthew scripture? Here we go. Matthew 6, 16 through 18 says this. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces at their fasting may seem by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. You do not need to broadcast to the, I'm fasting, excuse me, at work, I'm fasting. Live, go about your life. Wash your face, brush your teeth, get your hair done, take a shower. Put some, put some good cologne or perfume on. Don't walk around here in sackcloth and ashes I'm talking about, I'm fasting. I, I, I'm not I'm fasting. Don't do that. If you do that, you need a hamburger. Go, go get you a fofofo. 
This is between you and God. You know, if somebody asks you, hey, you have, hey you're not eating lunch. You know, what's going on? Um, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm not, like, you know, just, like, we're just praying, just fasting. And you never know, that actually might open up a door. That's happened to me. Like, I'll be at work. Well, because y'all know I teach. When I was teaching high schoolers, I'll be in my room working during lunch, and I'll have my, I'll have my, my infused waters and stuff. And my students will be like, hey, Green, you, didn't, you haven't gotten lunch in a couple of days. You all right? And I'm like, oh, no, I'm good. You know, we're just, I'm just fasting. And they're like, okay, cool. Like the church going kids, amen, hallelujah, praise God. And like a lot of kids who didn't go to church, well, why are you fasting? I'm like, I'm fasting because, you know, I'm just, I'm praying about some things. I'm thinking about some things. And, you know, this is a way that, that we, that, that some Christians do it, that, you know, we put something away for a hot second and we pray and we ask God for answers. Oh, cool. Leave it at that. Not, I'm fasting. Go eat that salad. Just go, go eat. Eat a meal. You'll be all right. So, you know, this doesn't have to be this whole billboard thing of, oh, look at me. I'm fasting. That's what the hypocrites do. That they, they literally walk around like, and they'll, they'll literally walk around, I'm fasting for the Lord. Don't talk to me, heathens. No, don't do that. Live your life. You don't need to post on Facebook and Instagram unless you're social. Hey, I'm going on social media fast. I won't be on here for a while. In fact, honestly, I just ghost people. Oh, where was you? I was, I was fasting. But this, is a, but this is a you and God decision. So that is the scriptural rationale behind why we're doing what we're doing. So now let me give you the, the, the um, instructions in the nitty gritty. So this is our refast. So during this fast, we are repenting and reconciling. We are aligning ourselves with the will and the plan of God. We are, re we are seeking restoration. That means being brought to holiness. We are being revived meaning a refilling, an indwelling. Some of y'all are going to get, a, get, a, get your first fill of the Holy Ghost in this. Watch. You watch. It's going to creep up on you. And then we're seeking to be released. What does that mean? To be released to fulfill what God has called us, both individually and corporately, to fulfill. And what I hear this in the Holy Ghost that for some of you, your greatest deliverance is going to come in these next 21 days. I know for me, I'm fasting so that way I can leave my past behind and move forward with intentionality. What are you fasting for? I'm fasting to see these seats filled. I'm fasting to be able for us to be able to fulfill the mandate that God has placed on us on this city. What are you fasting for? I want you to think about that. What are you fasting for, my friend? So the fast begins May 3rd and lasts until May 23rd after service. Fasting is based on individual choice. What do I mean by that? So church is like, don't eat this, don't eat this, don't eat this, don't eat this, don't do this. But I was like, God, how do we do this? And God said, you have people who work physically strenuous jobs. You have people who have major health issues. So, uh, so saying everybody doesn't eat this stuff excludes them. What is that thing that's distracting you? Do you need to push the plate away? Do you, do you need to focus on eating healthily? I mean, your middle, if your middle name is Candy Bar, I'm just saying, the Lord's dealing with me on that. If you need, if you, do you need to push away the plate completely? Do you need to reduce what you're, or restrict what you're eating? Do you need to not watch so much TV? Or do you need to not watch so much cruddy TV or TV that's not feeding your spirit and, like, you know, live on TVN or the Word Network for a hot second? Or do you need to change your musical choices to where you're listening to stuff that edifies your spirit and not makes you want to twerk in these streets? Like, do, like, what, what is that thing that's blocking you? Is it your social media? Is that what's blocking you? Whatever it is, if, if you're smoking, 
smoking, drinking, you know, you're on that reefer, whatever it is. Ask God what needs, what needs to be put on the back burner for a hot second. And the funny thing is it takes 21 days to make a habit. So you never know. You might come out and say, like, I don't need that no more. What are you giving up? So the duration, so the days and the weeks, days per week is on you. But we ask that Wednesday is the corporate fasting day. So that everyone, one, one day a week, everybody, Wednesdays, we are participating in what we're fasting. If you're like, Wednesday's the only day I can really do it, okay, I got you. If you're like, I'm going to do all 21 days, amen, praise God, I, I pray you stick with it. But I ask that Wednesday be the day that we all fast together. Then the church will be open for noon prayer from noon to one. And we're going to do this both in person and live. So if you're at work or if you're not in Lancaster and you're like, I want to be in the prayer service, but I don't want to drive all the way down there, you can hop on our Facebook. We'll do it live on Facebook and um, you'll be able to come and be a part of it. Um, so the dates will be Thursday, May 6th. Thursday, May 6th is actually the National Day, Day of Prayer. And then the two Wednesdays thereafter, which, is, or which are May 12th and May 19th. 12 to 1, one hour. Tap your invisible neighbor say one hour. We're going to vote one hour on Wednesdays to prayer. And then this is leading up to our Pentecost Sunday and Founders Day encounter. We, as a church, we celebrate the day that this church was a legal entity, and we use this day to honor those who helped build the foundation of this church. And then also, we celebrate Pentecost because Pentecost is the birthday of the, of the church as we know it, and it's also the day that the Holy Spirit descended upon, upon his people, and we get to see the stuff that we see today. So it's a double whammy, so we're going to have some church. So 12 o'clock, please be here. I will be officially off a of sabbatical, and I got a word. Invite your friends, invite everybody. We are going to have a good time that day. So, but on that day, we'll be bringing back something that we did when the church started, and God is leading us to do it again, which is pre-encounter prayer. And we'll be do, starting that at 11 a.m. on that day. We might still be getting stuff ready, but we're going to create an atmosphere of prayer. We're going, to, we're going to surrender our hearts to be in alignment with what the Holy Spirit wants to do in the service. So that way, so that way the Holy Spirit ha has his way and we are able to move in power and authority and also in order into what he's calling for us to do. And we'll do that every Sunday thereafter. So please understand that what we're doing, the Bible says in, in Mark, the ninth chapter, I have it written down, Mark 9, 14 through 27. I want you to read that on your own time. And also in some versions, Matthew 17, 21, that these kind cannot come out by anything except prayer. Matthew 17, 21 says prayer and fasting. There are some things in the spirit that are trying to, that are trying to bombard this space, bombard this, this building, and we are standing against it. My God, we are standing against it as a body, as a collective church, so that way, so that way God can get the glory out of this and that we are able to move freely about and do what we need to do. So please join us. Please join us in this. A couple of reminders. Remember this. Check your heart during the process. Don't get prideful. Uh, my nana, my, my, my nana the, the late Bishop Dr. Donna J. Rice said, don't get haughty. Don't get prideful. Check your heart in this process. Make sure your heart is in alignment with God while you're in this process. And this is your first time or, this, or you have medical issues, please fast wisely. If, taking, if pushing the plate away is going to be detrimental to your health, find something else. If the Lord leads you to do it, he will, he will get you through it. He will strengthen you. Your health, he will deal with your health. He will deal with all that stuff. And also, armor up. That is crucial. Don't just come in here like you super invincible. 
then get jacked up because you were not armored up. And why am I telling everybody to armor up? Because when you're working in a spiritual discipline, there's spiritual warfare. I encourage you during this time to read the temptation of Christ. I think, I believe it's Matthew 4, that you read the, the temptation of Christ and see that Jesus was fasting when, when the devil attacked him. And Jesus used the word against him. Jesus used the word against the enemy. So be armored up. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 says this. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, have it put on the shield of faith. No, as, and as shoes on your feet, have it put on, the, put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, Keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. And also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Highlight this, bookmark this, put it on your mirror, put it on your phone, put it everywhere, and put your armor on every day. So we can see a victory. Amen? That's the word. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for this time that we have spent together digesting and hearing what you have to say for us. So, Lord God, I pray right now over every single person who is going to be a part of this fast. And, Lord, I pray protection over them and anything that is connected to them, their children, their spouses, their house, their job, their finances, their cars, their, their everything, every person in their family that's connected to him, Lord God. I pray that they see a, a well, a, a, a wellspring of favor, that they, that if they need a new job, it happens, Lord God. That if they need a, a promotion, it happens, Lord God. That financial needs are supernaturally met in this season, that their children are, are walking, begin to walk in a mindset of Christ, that, that everything around them is peace and not war, Lord God, because you have sent the, the warring angels to fight for, for, for us already. Lord God, we pray for this church during this fast, that you grow us and you develop us. And Lord God, you turn the fire up to hot, Lord God, so that way this place come becomes the habitation that you've called it to be, and, and that we become the habitations that you've called us to be in this process. Satan, the Lord God rebuke you. I bind you up right now in the name of Jesus, and I decree and declare you defeated in Jesus' name. I command every demonic force, I command demonic generals to be to be to be to be to be taken down in the name of Jesus I, I come against the spirits of the air right now and I command the Holy Spirit to rest upon this property that you set an angel on this parking lot that is 12 stories tall and it's like you will not get through me you will not pass here stop it that's enough and I speak to every household to every person who is represented by this ministry I speak to India I speak to Georgia I speak to to Arizona, I speak to South Carolina, I speak to all others who watch us all over the world, that you protect them and that you keep them during this time. And Lord God, I decree and declare financial blessing for this church. I decree and declare people, willing workers and hungry souls to come into this place seeking a word from God. Lord God, I decree and declare healing be in this house. Lord God, you kept saying to me that there shall be a resurgence of the glory in this house and not just power 
power, but also nature. That we will be the, gen the doxa generation. That we will, that because we walk in the nature of God, that the power of God will be released in uncanny ways, in ways that people have not seen or experienced before in this city, Lord God. That you will use us as a beacon of hope, restoration, healing, deliverance, breakthrough, and freedom. So, Lord God, I seal this word with a hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I decree and declare it so. By your name we pray. Amen. Go in peace, y'all. Knowing that you're loved, God bless you.